I love her. Um, so yeah, we thought we would just check in with everybody. Yay. Um, so you've seen the questions. I'll just have everybody like introduce themselves first of all. Um, uh, I'm Jessica Wallenfels. I was the director of The Wolves. Should we go by number? Oh, that will make uh-huh. Well, I'll have to remember who goes first. Yeah, it's it's two. No, double zero. Yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm Lauren. <laughs> I played double zero. Lauren, hey. yeah. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I'm on high. There's an alien <laughs> in the background. Does someone have my name is Delaney Barbour, and I play number two. Okay. I think I'm next. My name is Quinlan Fitzgerald and I played number seven. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ash Heffernan and I play number eight. I almost forgot. Hi, my name is Fiona Palazzi and I played number 11. Hi, Fiona. Hi, my name is Andrea Verne and I played 13. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Alyssa Longoria and I played 14. I am Barbie Wu, and I played 25. I am Kaylee Rhodes, and I played 46. Hi, I'm Maureen <laughs> who, who am I? Um, and I played the soccer mom and was without number. Yes. <laughs> and I'm David Levine, and I think in this moment, I want to say that I play soccer dad. Oh. <laughs> but at the time I was stage manager. <laughs> it's a it's a little known offstage character we created. So, yeah. I got the minivan out front. Oh. <laughs> I well, still have the quarter that you gave me from uh, making my ball through your legs. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> got time in the car. We'll put that on the extras. <laughs> Um, great. Uh, so just to put this all in context, I think we started rehearsing in August of 2019. We opened in September of 2019. We closed November? October. October, October yeah. First week, I think. October of 2019. World has changed a lot. And we wanted to check in with all of you guys because some of you have been making shows together, some of you have been working out together, some of you have been <laughs> falling in love together. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, Drea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I we wonder just, who it is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to check in with you guys and see what have you been up to since uh, our show closed off stage and on. Yeah, <laughs> who goes first? Should I call on people? That that would be great. Okay, okay. Um, how about Pemberley folk? Oh, that's us. Yeah. Um, what, yeah, Kaylee and I did a show together. We stopped rehearsing. Well, we closed Ben, no, we closed Wolves and went right into Christmas. What is it called? Miss Pemberley. Chris, no. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Bennett okay. colon Christmas at Pemberley. That's right. It was the exact opposite of Wolves. Yeah. How so? Because your um, Kaylee, your very retiring forty six was kind of different. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I like to call my character Slutty Lydia, and um, dumb, dumb Slutty Lydia. Sorry for the recording. Um, <laughs> and forty six was way cooler. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was really fun. Um, and oh, I think I mean Quinn back. We, we were going to come back this Christmas. We are no longer coming back this Christmas. Um, so that's been something that's been changed by coronavirus. Um, but it was, it was really fun to, um, it was actually interesting because in Pemberley, 
my character and Quinn's character hate each other <laughs> at the beginning and are really like bitchy to each other. And then by the end, we're a BFF. Yeah. Which is cute because of 46 and 7's story. Totally. And Quinn, your character was also kind of the opposite of who you played in The Wolves, right? <laughs> and she's British. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, both Seven and I played Anne de Berg in um, Christmas at Pemberley. Uh, they were both kind of like the um, villain. If either of the, none, of, the cool thing of, is that neither of the scripts, The Wolves and Christmas at Pemberley, had a villain really. Mm-hmm. But both characters did come in really hot. They were really combative, um, very strong female characters who were hiding a lot of like hurt underneath the the storm of I think Marissa said like she's like a hurricane she's like a storm that comes in and just like and that was kind of like seven just like tore down anything that she didn't like so actually I just spent like four months being like really angry and sad it's like do all the sad work and then just be really mad (laughs) I see that now (laughs) <laughs> I, I was thinking of your character in Christmas of Pemberley being very much a buzz kill, whereas Seven is a bit of a party bringer. But, True. but now, now I see on this deep, deeper layers, someone should write a thesis on like the relationship between those two characters. <laughs> and then, yeah, course, that'd be good, Quinn. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about Portland Center stage here, and Drea has been on that stage twice since we last did a show together. Do you want to talk about that, Drea? Uh, yeah, I can. <clears throat> um, uh, as y'all know, I was like also rehearsing for Redwood at the same time. Um, Redwood was just like an incredible experience. I felt really lucky to have like um, just another great cast right after doing Wolves um, and to work with just such like, I don't know, I learned so much about myself as an artist. <clears throat> after doing Redwood, I didn't plan this out because I don't have like a table or anything to put this laptop on. It's just rocking and rolling. Anyway, um, yeah, so it it was nice to learn from uh, Durrell Grand Moultrie, great photographer, um, and just like made really uh, great human connections with people in that show. And then after that, I got to do Schoolgirls, which was like the complete opposite of, of the Wolves and Redwood because it's just like um, so much self-hate I think that um, Paulina had internalized from her environment and um, and it takes place in Ghana um, but also um, it was an all-girls school so it was nice to to work with um, an all-female identifying cast and I think one femme um, character um, yeah that was hard Paulina was very hard um, yeah, it took me on a very intense journey <laughs> in uh, December and January. So the winter was uh, kind of dark for me, um, but it was great. I had fun uh, doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Kaylee has a great follow-up question here. Had you ever played a villain like that? No, no, that's what made it so fun and challenging at the same time. Um, because like, I literally, I don't know if y'all know Treasure Lunin, um, but I say a lot of mean things to their characters. So like, um, right after we would like finish running a scene, I'm like, no, that I love you. And like, because it was intense, uh, the stuff that Paulina had to say. Um, but yeah, she was Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like you guys in The Wolves, you really, um, took care of each other in an amazing way, but the status play was like, um, competitive team sport whereas in schoolgirls, it's really to injure right know, it's really cutting right 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 yeah. uh how about you a barbie woo what you been up to uh so the wolves was my only show this season um it i wanted to use this year to focus on teaching so i've been teaching some classes at artist repertory theater um, some adult acting classes, and they've been, they've been a blessing. Like I really treasure the, um, the experience I have with my students. Um, I don't know. Like I got to teach for two years in graduate school, and you know, like I had their grades, so it's not like 
they can really mess around in my class. That would be an alfonquia. So, but with the adults, like these people wanted to come take an acting class. So I just felt really honored and um, that I had a great privilege to teach them what I love. And, um, and I think even in the reiteration of a lot of my, how I approach acting just got even more solidified as, um, as I was teaching those ideas. Um, yeah, and I was slated to do a uh, show called um, Blank by Nassim Suleimanpour. He's an Iranian playwright, but that show was canceled or delayed because of the COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. Darn it. Um, and speaking of education, I know Fiona graduated. Congrats, Fiona. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Awesome. What's mm -hmm. happening now? Uh, oh my gosh, so much has happened. Um, so I, when I finished The Wolves, really soon after that, well, I, I like doubled down on my thesis, which was written and performed. So I got that over with. And then the next morning, I moved back to Olympia to spend some time with my family. And I started a nanny job here for this insane little two-year-old named August. And um, that's really fun. Uh, or that was really fun. Um, and then I was just preparing for grad school editions. What you know, because you wrote me a lovely letter of rec. And I, I appreciate that so much, Jessica. Um, uh, and then I went... First, I, I had audition in Seattle for UW, and then the next week I flew to New York and did um, a few different auditions there, the Satellites, the Erdas, and then for Royal Conservatory of Scotland. And Kaylee was there at the same time, actually. Um, and I got into my top programs. Um, the top, top program, unfortunately, wasn't, like, super reachable financially, but... Um, I actually, I decided to go to UC Irvine, so I'm gonna go to grad school in the fall there, and that program is, I'm so excited about it. Um, it has everything that I want, and just the people there were so inspirational, um, and just just really good people that I can tell care a lot, and I care a lot, so I, <laughs> I didn't wanna be like, around people that didn't have that energy as well. I mean, I assume in grad school, everyone cares i would hope so <laughs> um then i got back uh from new york and all the grad school stuff was done and i was set to fly to palermo sicily to go au pair there but first i had summer stock auditions in boston so i was going to spend like a week or so in boston auditioning or just going to that audition and uh like hanging out um so i i did got that audition over with the morning before I was supposed to leave for Sicily. Um, that was when everything was shut down in Italy. So my contract had to be canceled. At that point I was like, I don't really want to go back to Olympia right now. Cause this is kind of like, I've never, I've, it's been a really long time since I've had a gap between like school and like commitments and stuff. So within like three days, I found two jobs and a place to live. I did that for like a week and a half and then the entire city shut down and I had to fl like fly back to um, Olympia. So <laughs> I've been here since then, but um, I've actually had a really amazing time just creating and just my mind is totally cleared up and I'm really excited for the future. So that's where I'm at. That's awesome. So you will go to Irvine this fall? I don't know if classes are going to be in person for the first term, but um either virtually for the first term or in person, I'm gonna start grad school in the fall. Yeah, it's a crazy time to be going to a conservatory program. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. but yeah, is what it is. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, update on me, I am teaching at um, Western Oregon University in their BFA program um, this fall, and I feel the same way. Like, it's on the fence about how much will be in person, how much will be um, via screen, and just feels like, you know, trying to create the kind of magic that we did in our room, which is what I try to do in my classrooms. It just feels like, oh my god, is this even possible? Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. But like you, you know, you've got a group of people who really want to be together and really want to study. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, milestones. I'm, I'm gonna go with milestones. So Alyssa, I know you had a birthday recently. 
Oh my goodness, I did have a birthday. <laughs> my 22 Taylor Swift birthday um, was during quarantine. It was really, really sweet. Um, yeah, it was sweet. It was sweet. Uh, Since the Wolves, that was my last onstage thing I've done, and I've kind of been focusing on other things that I also really love. Um, I've been working as a makeup artist since then, um, which is really cool because it's kind of just like inspiring people through a different form of art, and I love it so much. It's going to be kind of tricky when things open back up, especially in that field of art, just because it's so um, close to people's face. Uh, so I'm interested to see how that's going to go, um, if I'm even going to have a job when things open back up. But I've also been um, doing a little soul searching and I decided to go back to school, which is something that's kind of exciting to me and really cool. important to me now. So uh, that's my main focus right now is my, my school. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you dreaming about in terms of school? Oh my goodness, it's so, it's still so overwhelming to me. I just made this impulse decision like a month ago. I'm just finishing up my associates because I was a little college dropout. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's uh, in process. Sounds in like you're process. in process. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. That's so great. Um, Okay, let's see. We've got some apprentices or Portland Playhouse apprentices, apprenti. Um, are you guys were, uh, finishing up your solo shows? Yeah, we are. Um, eight oh, people wow. in the audience, Ooh. live streaming them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're going in for rehearsals with masks on and alcohol swabbing everything. And um, just kind of, I think there was a big push to just finish the apprenticeship as it should be finished. Mm -hmm. So very pushing into doing Zoom. We've done like three Zoom classes a week and working on our solo shows, which feels kind of insane, but it's also, you know, good to kind of get it done. It's, we, we're going to leave with some really cool scripts. So that's, that's good. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree with that. And I'm really, I'm really thankful that the Playhouse was like, let's continue the apprenticeship because like, I feel like if we had just ended in March at the end of Pipeline, I would have felt really incomplete. And like, I think all of us would have been kind of like angry about it. Um, but in the end, like Nikki and Brian and Corinne were all like, we gotta, we gotta make it happen and we're gonna still do solo shows. And so like yesterday it was cool because like Ash Delaney and I like we're all in the same building with our little masks on, rehearsing and yeah, but we're excited to do it. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be a lot of fun that we all get to like still perform and then put our work out there and have like actual things that like we could put into portfolios or things like that, that like people can just view. Um, and like the Playhouse isn't gonna like charge us anything extra to film it for us which is really nice so That's yeah right. well and and having done a little bit of solo work myself it is such a mind cluster to work on a solo show because one drives oneself crazy alone in one's room i find when you're making art me myself and i so i can't imagine making a solo show in this additional time of isolation where it's not like I get to go back and be with my people <laughs> they remind me who I am yeah it's been a very emo I think it would be an emotional very emotional thing anyway and yeah. I know personally like it, yeah it gets really overwhelming and kind of like debriefing only over computers and things like that and, and this week was the first time we'd been back in the theater um since it's march close, yeah. um how, how does so that feel? uh how does yeah, that feel just coming back in lots of emotions lots of yeah yeah how, how do you feel I'm about so being in the same building together do you feel okay about like the masks and the swabs yeah you know i mean there's it's tough because um ash and i escaped to my parents house in hood river oregon um, and I've since had to give up all housing in Portland. So I'm living in Hood River now for a little bit. Um, and they live out in the middle of nowhere. So there's like a lot of protection. Like we have total control over who comes in and out of our house, who goes and gets groceries, who disinfected everything. Um, so it's, it's weird being in a room full of people. It's like very panic inducing sometimes because it's mm -hmm. like, oh man, because my parents are in their late 50s and I don't want to spread it to them. And yeah, but 
also it's tough because you know we go to the Walmart and River and we're definitely gonna touch things and breathe in things that we probably wouldn't even be exposed to in the playhouse so it's kind of a weird mind game yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like I I have the same kind of situation where like my mom has like some pre-existing conditions that like she like we don't want to like leave the house and have there be a chance of anything um and so like when I come home like I have to completely like take a shower and everything like immediately when I get home but I feel like I feel like Tira's done, like, a really good job of, like, making sure that, like, we cleaned everything. Like, yesterday I had to, like, wipe down the whole microphone and everything before Delaney used it. And it was, like, Tira's got it set up. I felt more clean in that building than I have in any other building I've gone into throughout all of quarantine. So I was, like, I feel safe. I feel good because Tira's doing the best ever. That's awesome. That's really great. It would, it would be a difficult layer to make work and be worrying about that at the same time. Yeah. Well, also I noticed a couple of you are quarantining together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are. Um, Ash and Delaney. Oh, <laughs> we have to voice like recording. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, yeah, we started dating right after the wolves. <laughs> it brought us together legitimately. <laughs> Just like hours and hours of sitting cross-legged, um, staring at someone. I was like, man, Ash is super pretty. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how that went. Uh, actually, uh, we, we actually were in um, a little bit of, what was Tina Packer's show called? Women of Will. Women of Will. We were in a little bit of, we were asked to be part of Women of Will, which was super cool. And we ended up like spending hours and hours with Tina Packer. Yeah, like we played like <laughs> romantic opposites in yeah. the scene. And we would like help her with workshops. And like, mm-hmm. she was like, ended up, we just ended up becoming friends with her. So we ended up spending a ton of time together right after the Wolves. We're already spending a ton of time together. And it just, you know, and then inevitable. And then with the Playhouse. We spent tons <laughs> of time together. <laughs> everyone Uh, together yeah it was crazy (laughs) (laughs) um other folks did you see this coming did you see delaney staring at ash and thinking how pretty she is did you catch this (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah there was a night when we all went to a bar together and delaney just goes I really, I really like you, Ash, and, like, I just, I, I really like you, and I, I don't know why you don't, uh, you know, don't like me, too. I think we should really hang out some more, and I was, yeah, like. Yeah, it wasn't, like, we had to pick up on things. Delaney was, no, no. like, I like Ash. <laughs> also, Delaney would come into the dressing room every day during Wolves and, like, play with Ash's hair and, like, give Ash a little shoulder rub. We all know. We all know. I had to sit next to it. I had to sit in between them during Christmas Carol. It was crazy. Okay. I think I was the last to find out. I think it yeah, was. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I would look at Ash and be like, I like you. I want to date you. And she'd be like, hi, huh, you're so funny. And I'm like, it's not a joke. She's like, I, yes, you're just such a joke, sir. I'm like, I'm literally not joking. So that went on for months. So I was like, why won't you hear me? <laughs> it was like, am I speaking English? Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome, you guys. Uh, a little birdie named Barbie Wu told me a few months ago. So, <laughs> do you see, like how I just threw you under the bus there? Yeah, um, not okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, I just have to say for the recording, everyone was like cringing while Delaney's describing all the things they did to try and get Ash's attention because we've all been there. We were there. Yeah, yeah, we were there. Oh, well, congrats, you guys. And I'm glad you guys can quarantine and be safe together. I don't think most of my early relationships would have withstood a quarantine. So good on you. Yeah, it's been, it's been surprising, but really good. Really helped, really helped me, I know, to be with them. And with their family, who is like, truly incredible. Like some of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. (laughs) So cool. Mm -hmm. So much to be grateful for. How about you, Ms. Porter? Maureen Porter's been running a theater company, per usual, which is a real yeah. fun thing to be doing right now. It is. It's such a fun thing to be doing at any time, particularly right now. Yeah. Um, the adventure, uh, yeah, the adventure continues. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's, but it's good. I, um, I'm so excited about the love affair. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> I just want to say that I also thought that occasionally in our dressing room, I was like, Delaney always finds her way to Ash. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. And the chemistry was the chemistry was so good. It's so beautiful. So that's so that makes me so happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is a good thing. Um, uh, yeah, I uh, we were in, you know, after the wolves, which I loved so much, I just had it just felt like this really kind of amazing little place where I got to watch everybody do this beautiful work. Um, just went, you know, back to work and started. We were getting ready rehearsals for Incognito by Nick Payne at Third Rail Repertory Theater and um, had to cancel a week. We were heading into tech um, to postpone the show. So like many of you, this notion of is it a postponement and what does it look like and um, how we stream and um, if we do. And it's just been a remarkable, complex, um, uh, sometime, you know, roller coaster ride. Um, uh, there are like every day feels like I think all of us, there's this sort of um, sense of uncertainty that I think is always apparent. It's always true in life, but this moment in time has sort of unmasked that entirely. And so to live trying to plan for a life or a theater company's life um, with so much uncertainty in the landscape changing so um so often is you know it's a challenge i'm i'm uh i'm learning things that are like i <laughs> i'm learning to do things and adjust and shape shift in ways that i uh i would not have otherwise been doing so just trying to hang on to hope and um uh you know i have a great group of people around me including people in the community oh i have to say that one of my favorite things since the wolves is that Fiona, who told me that she would be my pen pal, has actually written me letters. Of course I, I did. That, and I owe you one. Because <laughs> I got my first ever pen pal letter entirely written on post-it notes. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was That's like one of, my, one of my favorite things at all. So I want you to know that I owe Fiona a letter. Um, and then also I'm excited because um, we did cast Ash in um, uh, a show, Mary Jane, and it has been moved to next season, but we are, I'm so excited. I was so excited, so excited um, to have uh, that. I was like, we have to look at Ash, you know? So I'm very <laughs> excited about that. When that comes, we're gonna make it happen at some point. I keep saying theater's gonna come back, not on a small screen. And so, anyway, so those are some uh, wolf-related joys of my pandemic time. You are sounding remarkably upbeat, uh, much more upbeat than I am feeling uh, 23 hours of the day. Are there digital options? We could do a whole nother podcast on this, but like, are there digital ideas that excite you right now, Maureen? Um, yeah, I mean, there are, um, there are things, one of the big questions is, as I'm sure you know, Jessica, is the question about like what, how we want to put something up that um, remains true to our underlying aesthetic and our interest. Um, like that, I don't want to just throw up material on a screen to do it. There's so much content available right now. There's a ton of free content available that's, that's phenomenal. Um, so I don't, I'm not interested in just wading into the make content for content's sake, but we've been looking at, um, uh, you know, different platforms, um, uh, the online streaming, I can't remember now, O, O, P, O, not O, P, B, <laughs> um, uh, O, P, S, anyway, that like is a free online streaming, um, platform, um, We've been looking at investment in actual uh, switchers and camera and what, would it, what it would mean for us to um, budget in a tech person who actually from the beginning has an eye on the design so that going forward, we might always capture um, with the quality we, we expect um, and want uh, performances. But there's, this is all expenditure before you have any timeline for guarantee of return of revenue. And it's, that, that leaves us all in a tenuous and pretty fragile place. Um, when you've I, already 
lost revenue, presumably from the spring. And, right, and not being then not being able to sustain and produce in the long term, put artists to work in the long term. So um, there are. I love this. I love the intersection of technology and dig the digital world. But I'm like an old, you know, like I'm an old workhorse actor for you know years before some of you were born. <laughs> <laughs> like I believe, and I know that some of you know this, and Barbie like sent me one of the most, just such like a lovely, so Barbie, this is so Barbie, just sent me the most lovely personal text message that I just was like, this is Barbie truly touching me. Um, my family, we lost, I lost, my sister died and um, of cancer, but in the midst of it all, it's, it was, it's been so devastating. And one of the things though that's most heartbreaking is that because of the pandemic, we have not been able to have um, the ritual of grief and celebration transformed in ritual of family and gathering. And the, the reason why I say that ultimately is that it's been making me think so much about theater that I really feel that the transformative power of theater is being in space with people. And I know we have to like, we have to consider all the options and we have to bridge this time in ways that serve our missions and serve our artists and, and serve our community. Um, but in the long term, my heart of hearts just knows that we need that, we need the ritual of gathered of gathering and embodied space and that and that that that's the that is really where um you know that's the same origins really of, of theater live inside of that and so i'm excited about the potential for all the digital stuff and ultimately um when the time is right uh i want us to be um sharing space it's beautifully said, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Lauren. Yeah, thank you. I yeah, thank you, and um, I appreciate that. And I, you know, um, my sister had cancer, and so there was a we there was a chance this would happen, but um, is is it's very difficult to grieve in this uh, void. Um, it's a very strange. It's surreal. It's very strange, but. But I, but I also have belief that we will get there. Do you know, we will, we will, my family will, we as a community will, we as artists will. Um, this is an opportunity for us to kind of, you know, show our fortitude and our, and our ability to stay, can keep that connective tissue with one another until we can be in space and time again and, and, and be transformative. I believe in that. Absolutely. And our, uh, willingness to jump on Zoom together is a testament to the fact that we will fight to keep that connectivity. When I think of the older people in my life who would not have gotten on Zoom or FaceTime otherwise, were like, well, now you have to, <laughs> or you don't get to see me or anybody else. And it's like, oh, we will, we will fight for connectivity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I know a little bit about what David Levine has been up to because we've been going to a very sexy accounting class together. Uh, there's a, the Regional Arts and Culture Council has offered this low cost accounting class, which it takes a quarantine to get my ass in the chair to learn about accounting. And um, because David serves as a board of directors on my um, theater company, Many Hats Collaboration, he's agreed to come along for the ride. So. I, I wish we had some exciting rock and roll tales to tell from that. But I mean, what else have you been up to, David? Um, well, Marie, first, I just want to say, Maureen, that was, I just appreciate the, like, the wisdom and insight of everything you said. It's just sort of like nice and grounding. Um, yeah, um, I guess so most immediately, I feel like everything has been sort of shedding. Like there's this feeling of like shedding my commitments and shedding my to-do list and shedding the weeds from my yard and it's like so there's this interesting space of like of um of perspective and i guess i'm saying that kind of to marine because i hear that kind of in your experience a little bit of like you're starting to, you kind of start to see things that are more essential when everything gets taken away um 
uh, on a lighter note, I guess I feel I was joking about being a soccer dad earlier, but I totally, when you were talking, Delaney and Ash, when you guys were talking about being together, I was there for the Wolves. Do you remember me? I was the stage manager. And then I was there for Women of Will. I mean, I watched the whole, and I, and then we get on the Zoom call when I was muted at the very beginning of the Zoom call, what I was trying to say was, hey, are you guys, wait, did you guys move in together? Like, what's going on? Like, what are you guys, how do you guys end up in the same space? I had no, just no, completely oblivious, had, had no idea. Um, uh, this, I'm just catching up on all the things that have been talked about for the last half hour. Fiona, if you go to UC Irvine, I have a, um, uh, a I guess I would call her a step niece who is 18 and she lives in Austin, Texas, although she's in Portland right now, but she, this is Wolves related. She is gonna be maybe the starting point guard for the UC Irvine Anteaters, Anteaters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the women's basketball team, you know, division one basketball what? team. Yeah. That's so cool. Super exciting. So she was, you know, she's a hot, hot, hot shot player from, uh, from Texas and got recruited and. I mean, well, she got, she, she David, if you send, send me a picture of yourself, I will make a cardboard cutout and I'll, I'll come to the games and I'll bring them. For you. So you'll be right there next to her. She was in tears last week. I think, you know, basically the school is, you know, it's unclear what's going to happen for the school and for D division one sports and, you know, mm -hmm. um, so she's, she was in tears last week because she doesn't know what her future is going to be. Um, all that. Um, I, after the Wolves, I did Women of Will, which was an amazing experience with Tina Packer and Nigel Gore. And it was like, it, it was, we did, it was, I think basically like 12 hours of shows, like 12 hours of content that was rehearsed, teched, and performed in three weeks. And some of the shows were two hours long and were performed only once. And, um, and, and then I learned that Tina Packer is, how, she's, do you remember how old she is? She's old, she's 80? 81. 81. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was just like, if you watch this woman go, I mean, at times she moved like an 81 year old, but at times I moved like a 91 year old during that production. And it was really this amazing experience to work with her. Um, just, just to see the quality of her work. Um, after Women of Will, my other gig that I've been doing the last year and a half or so is with the Red Door Project. Um, and working with Kevin Jones and uh, it's awesome. So I don't know if you, you, I think most of you know the show Hands Up. And then there was a show they produced called Cop Out. And then they put those two shows together. It's called Evolve. And um, from a stage management perspective, it's a sweet gig. It's, you know, instead of a cast of, you know, 12 people or whatever, it's, a, you know, one at a time. So people come in. It's usually just me and them. Sometimes Kevin is there. We run lines. We work through stuff. Um, when the virus hit, when everything kind of got shut down, it was... I had my bags packed. I was going to bend with the Red Door Project. Uh, we were leaving the next morning, whatever it was, like a Thursday morning, we were doing two shows at the Tower Theater. And that, uh, I had my bags packed. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I was about to go to bed. And I thought, you know, I'll just turn on, you know, sometimes when I fall asleep, I turn on the NPR on the radio. And, I, and there was an announcement that Kate Brown had just like at 10 o'clock that night announced that she was shutting down. This sounds so funny now. Um, that you couldn't have groups of larger than 250. Do you remember that? That was the first thing that they banned was groups of 250. And, um, and that shut us down because we were going you know, to have about 400 people at, at the Tower Theater. So, um, uh, yeah, so then it was, that got shut down. Then I started working Thurgood. I sort of had, in some ways, the perfect lineup of shows. Thurgood, Portland Playhouse was producing Thurgood with Lou Bellamy, and Lester Purry, who did Fences. Um, I worked on Fences with them a couple years ago. And it was sort of perfect. Lou said he was gonna stay in Minneapolis and just direct by Skype. Lester flew up from LA. We were in the Portland Playhouse studio for a week, um, even though we probably weren't supposed to be at that point. I think we were in some sort of shutdown at that point. But it was just me and Lester in the room. And then Lou, we had a, you know, a laptop or a computer nearby and Lou would, was piped into us. And, um, it was super fun. We had a week of really awesome rehearsal and, um, and we worked Thurgood for a week and it was a show that, yeah, that, that um, then got 
postponed. Maybe it'll come back at some point to Portland Playhouse. And ever since then, I've been in this room. I feel like Jessica knows this room well because I do a lot of my Zoom meetings in here. And um, uh, yeah, that's what I'm up to. I'm a little worried what happens next, honestly. I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, and I think there'll be some updates from the Playhouse rolling out here on some of the things you're talking about. <clears throat> um, well, it's not hard to pass 45 minutes with y'all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, hit these other questions, but if you feel moved to answer, you can, and if you don't, you don't have to. Um, some of you guys have alluded to this a little bit already, but I was wondering in light of how important the team is in the play, the wolves, who is your team now? How are you finding those folks and how are you fighting for that connection with them? I'm actually like for two of those things. So I'm living at home with my entire family right now, which means two sisters. So there's three of us. It's basically like a Jane Austen novel every day. Um, just being, I'm in LA currently. So that's, that's that. <laughs> um, also just in terms of like finding teams and connections, um, I'm currently working with, uh, I just want to chime in cause I got to run to a rehearsal right now. So currently I'm working with, um, Bedlam Theater Company, who's a theater company based in New York. They're the ones who, their sense and sensibility was at Portland Center Stage two years ago. Nigel's in the cast, so I'm in a reading with Nigel. I'm going to go see him now. He's, we're doing Much Ado About Nothing, and he's playing Leonardo. So, like, I get to go and see him. Lauren Modica's in it. So, like, that's kind of cool. And then and there's- And we can come see it. Yeah, Tom, come, come see it. it. We want to come see it. It's, um, we're doing Much Ado on, on Memorial Day. Uh, in like support of their veterans outreach program. Bedlam has a really cool outreach. So not only like in terms of connection, not only do we have like Lauren and I are from the Portland area, there's a couple of people from Los Angeles. We have our New York actors, two of which were in the Sense and Sensibility in Portland. And then we also have members of their veterans outreach program who are reading with us. There's, I believe, two people who are like working with us. So um, yeah, I have to run and go do that. I'm playing Balthazar, which means I'm basically making music for them. And yes, the link? I will, I will send the link to somebody so people can see it, but that's been fun. So it's, my task has been figuring out how to make music on my end. So I'll be doing a little bit of it live acoustically. And then the funeral song, um, I actually just sent it to Michael Mendelssohn because I just did this part in one of his readings a while ago, but I did a three part harmony and then edited it all together on my own. So it's been this weird thing of like learning how to make music and collaborate with people from all over and then put it together. And like, how can you make a live event that's, you know, effective? And then what elements of pre recorded things can you bring in? So that's kind of my team. That's amazing, Quinn. Bedlam, much ado, this Monday, 5 p.m. Hopefully this gets into the world's hands before then. Yeah, I think also it's a live event and I believe it's, I believe it's 5 p.m. EST, which means- Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll post about it on my, wait, what? Kaylee says, Kaylee knows more about my project than I do. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, but- I'll, I'll, I'll do more research and post it, but I got to run, but thank you. And I, it's so good to see all you guys. I hope, yeah, things are going well. Bye, everybody. Love you, Quinn. We miss you. you. See you soon. You too. Bye. Okay. Uh, so other squads, if you're, are you, are you finding that through readings, finding it through family? Um, I've, I've found um, like a community during this time. By, um, I set up a bunch of types of exchanges and Barbie, I'm uh, exchanging writing with Barbie every week um, because uh, I recently was speaking to a friend over the phone and they're talking about making a um, personal kind of like mission statement. And so I took a day to do that. And like, I know David, you're mentioning figuring out what's really important to you during this time. I feel like I've been doing that a lot recently. Um, and obviously artistry was right up there at the top of the list. So 
uh, every week there's I have a prompt with Barbie and we exchange a piece of writing for that prompt. This week it was a song. And then with another one of my friends um, that I've known since like elementary school, we have a songwriting exchange. So we write a song every week for a prompt, exchange that. And then I have um, choreography or physical theater exchange. So every week there's a prompt with uh, one of my friends that I did modern dance with back in Portland. And so we create a piece for that every week. And then I have a drawing exchange. I think, I think that's all. Wait, no, I also have a monologue exchange. So I, I'm reading a new play every week. And um, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Stop You're it. about to get so <laughs> much more problem. business. <laughs> You're about to get trapped before 11. <laughs> I, don't, I can't do this. This is impressive. But it's keeping me busy, and um, I feel really inspired. And I think this is the perfect time to practice just like creating without really high stakes and just no judgment of myself. And really, only one other person has to see it, so it can be really crappy, and it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Great way of looking at it, Fiona. I love that, like creating without high stakes and like creating in a vacuum. Sometimes I like a lot of constraints. Mm -hmm. So a vacuum feels scary to me, but it's also ultimate freedom to do whatever yeah. heck you want. Your 11 uh, things. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the opposite of how my thesis felt. Uh, although my thesis was really rewarding, it sometimes it felt like I lost track of the how wonderful the process is of creating that piece and developing that character and stuff. So. Barbie says that's so 11. Yeah, I'm gonna say it out loud because that is so absolutely 11. Um, <laughs> I, I've been really loving our Fiona and I's um, writing exchange. It's been really mm. cool and really wonderful. And she wrote a beautiful song. I'm gonna send it to you in DM because um, just <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I I feel like the wolves is always going to be my team. You're always going to be my team. Um, I love you and I miss you so much. And just having Kaylee's Zoom class like twice a week. Or, I mean, if you count the Sunday stretch, then it's three times. Um, that has been keeping me physically sane and mentally sane. I have a lot of rage as a person, so I just need a lot of physical outlet. Um, I've also been doing. Um, a weekly Sunday like play read with a lot of my friends from college. Um, just a lot of, it was a BA program. So most of us are not actually in theater anymore, but I really like reading plays out loud. So I've just been like, hey guys, like let's do this, you know, we'll read whatever. And we just, we're gonna read like a Shakespeare Star Wars this Sunday. It's gonna be probably horrible, but fantastic in the same time. Um, and uh, we're starting a checkoff group, so we're reading Cherry Orchard on Thursday and gonna dive into some scene work. It might be tragic, so it, it might be fun. We never know, but just that sort of, you know, like we're gonna do this and it's gonna be okay and just having something to look forward to every week, you know, like my Zoom classes with Kaylee and then the play read. Um, yeah, it's just been really comforting. Um, and having you in my life is the biggest gift so you guys that's really that's cool the standing dates I find that too I have some standing dates where we have like a Monday night movie group we have a Sunday night movie group and it's like knowing it's going to be there every week that helps me with ritual Andrea are you in on Kaylee's class too I'm too afraid yes I am oh. um, I'm in there this it's literally the only thing that keeps me grounded i've been trying to be like i don't know pretty active for i don't know five times a week because it's uh, my anxiety is always through the roof so it's been uh keeping me pretty grounded and it's hard um she's i don't know what's going on with kaylee but it's turning up every class um so yeah uh, but yeah i'm also back home in miami um that's been interesting um it's just like me and my parents so it's uh my mom is a kindergarten teacher so listening to her teach her class via zoom is like i don't know the sweetest thing <laughs> she's like everyone mute everyone get on mute now and they're like i love you this little so it's like the sweetest thing it's like it's great um i'm gonna zoom yeah, so I'm just back home. Please do. i'm just gonna I'm sit there and be like 
It's it's great. I'm reading a story to them on Friday, so it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be the best story they've ever heard. Yes, yes, it'll be so much fun. She's like, yeah, she's gonna act it out. I was like, wow, we didn't discuss this at all. You just volunteered me. You're like, but, I'm equity yeah, now. So, so I'm just like, hold on, like, <laughs> can't volunteer my time. There are things you have to go through. It's okay. It's on the house this time. It's all good. That sounds actually calming to to live with a kindergarten teacher. And do you have siblings with you or no? Um, well, I do have a sibling. My brother's 22. Um, for those who may not know, my brother is schizophrenic. Um, so he lives in a group home. Um, so I haven't even been able to see him because of COVID because they don't want us infecting other people that he lives in the group home with. Um, so the only thing we can do was like drop things off to the group home and like he comes to the door and he waves. Um, so I was doing that. I did that earlier today. Uh, so yeah. That's great. Speaking of fighting for connection, that must be agonizing to not be able to hug him. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Uh, but he's safe. He's all good. Um, yeah, he's doing good. That's great. All right. Any other squads that are giving you life? Yeah. Quick little thing. Well, my apprentice squad, of course. Yes. Like, awesome. I literally see them every Tuesday. We get to work on solo shows, which is just talking about yourself or just being yourself for three hours, which is pretty great. <laughs> um, but something that I'd like to do, and I would, I am inviting you all to join me in this. Well, I mean, kind of. You'll hear about it. So basically, I just send, I send letters like of like a you're you're awesome to like my friends from college. I've been doing that throughout all of this. And if you guys want to receive a little, like, your awesome card, you don't have to write me back unless you really want to, but send me your address, like, text it to me, whatever, and I would love to send you just a little card and just be like, you're amazing! So that's what I've been doing, because, like, I've had friends who were, like, pretty anxious, or, like, they just have been feeling down about themselves, and I'm just like, you need to know that, like, even if you feel like no one else appreciates you, I do. So if you guys want a little card, I am totally down to send you a card. Just send me your address and I'll send one your way but yeah that's kind of how I'm keeping connected yes um that's how I'm staying connected with like my squad and like my friends a couple of my friends like I FaceTime with every once in a while but really I'm just hanging out with my family and we go on walks twice a day I can now jog a mile it's amazing I'm so proud of myself it's yes! so, good. so yeah that's just kind of how I'm doing the whole squad thing but drop your address if you would like a car Sometimes you do your uh, solo physical scene just for fun. I'm sure you do. You know, the, the running and the running up the wall. Yes, I absolutely do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's so great, Lauren. I love that. It's just like creating ripples out of goodness, right? You know, of like, how can I make some positive change? It's really beautiful and personal. Um, I want to make sure I hit this question uh, before we part ways. Uh, you, some of you guys have mentioned this already. Um, you're in different parts of the country. Um, how are you looking at the future of theater in relationship to where you are currently? Are you nervous or eager to get back on stage? Really long, Barbie, yeah. Taking a little. Um, not really a career turn, but like I, I applied to do my master's in teaching at Western Oregon actually, which is funny, but yeah, so it's an online master's program and I'm getting along in the interview process. So fingers crossed that that works out. And then I also applied to do a AmeriCorps program helping underprivileged kids in high schools. So definitely I think this actually situation has made me sort of step back and think, Dieter will always be there. I don't know if I want to um, necessarily be a part of this like confusing, like I always will be a part of it, but the, the uh, climbing and scraggling and trying to figure out if we do it online and stuff has actually made me super depressed because I'm, I just miss, I think that theater is always in person and that when it's not in person, it's not really theater. So I know other people have different opinions about that, and I super respect that. I just, for me personally, I don't, I don't feel the same connection when I'm, like, staring at my computer screen. So I was thinking, okay, well, like, how can I serve and 
use my skill sets because I don't really have many besides like theater and acting and I thought I could teach theater in like middle schools so um definitely that's like my thing that I've been doing to sort of like find some light and like lightness and uh like kind of light at the end of the tunnel through all this is like having another kind of thing to fall back on when like something like this might happen again because I don't think I ever fully expected like especially at the beginning of my career this all to just like crumble around me and like losing all these projects that I had lined up and stuff so definitely kind of reevaluating what life and like what my adult life is going to look like after this for sure yeah, yeah. and it's been um really interesting oh, go for it go for it Kaylee you go I I I've been teaching you know middle school math in quarantine so I just taught this morning um wearing this <laughs> um, okay then we have to describe that that is a hot dog costume literally taught from inside the hot dog costume just to get them to like please god pay attention to me um but delaney i'm really glad i'm so glad that you've come to the realization that i've had from like the second i met you that you are a middle school teacher <laughs> <laughs> not only we are a rare breed, breed and it's, it's awesome it's in them it's in them it, the capability is in them i mean and that is a superhero is also what kaylee is saying yeah i'm really saying it's a hot it's a hot dog but <laughs> hot dog superhero i really relate to what you're saying about looking for ways i can serve that feels really like a loud voice in my ear right now too. Yeah. Barbie, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, I feel like, I think theater, I think human beings will always need theater. You know, like if we stop telling stories, I think we go, we go crazy. Like something that Ursula K. Le Guin said that, you know, when people stop telling stories, they go mad. And I believe that because I think it's a very innate human need. Um, and I do believe that theater will survive this pandemic. Um, I'm going about to launch into like two audio plays with two different theater companies. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but hopefully it will still be somewhat of a similar experience. I think being in the physical space, witnessing the same thing with other people is the most magical thing in the world because your heartbeats sync, you know, your breathing sync, um, and nothing will replace that. So I do believe that theater will, will survive. Anyone else? Alyssa, what are you feeling about getting back on stage? I know it sounds like you might be branching off into another direction, but. Yeah, uh, my, my heart will always be in theater. And I've also been feeling kind of the same feelings as Delaney of like, well, maybe I could use these feelings that I'm feeling of empowerment and this art that I love into teaching one day and kind of thinking about my future too. So I feel that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at this point right now where I'm just venturing into everything I love, but theater will always be the number one thing that I love in my heart. So I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm always going to be my love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys. Mm -hmm. I've been feeling very strongly also like to, to jump off Delaney about what it is and what it isn't. And it is a cool thing when you can catch a play that's good online, whether it's live stream or recorded. And it's also not the thing. Um, it is a different cool thing that is worthy of exploration for me. Um, I feel nervous and excited. Um, and scared about getting back into a theater, you know. I feel like I want to keep people safe. I want to be safe. Um, I want people to feel safe. Mostly I'm like, I mean, I need my rehearsal room to feel like a place where people can take risks and lick each other and fall on the floor and, you know, <laughs> um, exchange some droplets. Um, so... Yes, yeah. When can we do that? What What have you, since you've spent this whole time asking about us, what has you, what what amazing, great thing has come out of quarantine for you? Oh, good question, Terry, number two. 
Um, well, I, <laughs> I would, I'm not sure it's amazing or great, but, uh, I have tried cooking a little bit. I'm like a terrible cook. Eric is the cook in our house, my husband. So I have ventured like little wobbly steps into the kitchen. Um, and that's been kind of fun because not all of it is terrible like it used to be. When I actually slow down and like take a little bit of time and some patience and some care, I don't burn everything. Um, I'm like animal, the Muppet animal in the kitchen pretty much. Ah, when's that gonna be done? Um, so that's been fun. Uh, <laughs> I have been doing a lot of um, trying to read and explore and pick up on where this is all going and what other people are saying about it and um, sometimes to the point of overload. But I hope that all of that somehow integrates and then comes out something different. But right now it just feels like the woods. So that's kind of tough. Um, but you brought up a great question, which I now will consider we're in bonus round. I'm going to go off script a little bit and give you guys the option to say, um, what vices are you leaning into? Ooh! Or, ooh! Um, or experiments like my cooking. I'll start, but you might have to edit it out. Excellent. Um, I've been doing a lot of fun shit. I've been having a really good time. Um, at my personality, I thought that if you told me this, that I would be like suffocating and dying of boredom and loneliness, but no, I'm not. I'm actually really enjoying like not being, um, cooled in 18 places at once and just having to like be in one place. Um, this is what my planner still looks like, but it's okay because I'm doing a lot more dancing, which is really fun. And it's taking a place in a lot, it's taking a lot of different shapes. I'm taking classes, I'm, I've commissioned choreography. Um, I've paid for someone to choreograph for me, like a, someone in this community. I like reached out to a choreographer and I was like, I know you might not be getting a lot of work. Here's some money, choreograph something for me. And um, I've done some commissioning myself where I have paid a few people to do some stuff. Maybe you'll see it, the fruits of that one day. Um, but Kaylee, okay. um, do you, are you familiar with the Bat Sheva da dance company in Tel Aviv, Israel? It like the technique of it's called like Gaga. No, don't laugh at that. It's a real thing. Okay. It's a real um, thing. <laughs> no, you, but you want to get high like, and do it. <laughs> no, but this is exactly what you're looking for. They offer classes like six times a day. I will send you the link. You. Okay. This is exa literally the the exact. Words that they have said to me is, imagine that your spine is like a kelp floating in the ocean. That is it's what perfect I was, for you. I was a seaweed last night. Yes. And so, um, yeah. so that's what I've been doing because there's no pressure to um, use all of my time so product oriented. It can be a little more process and exploration oriented. Um, and that's, uh, that's a, it, it seems very like flippant and silly and, but for me, it's actually like a freeing of product and more of an immersion in the process. At Kaylee, you win because that's vice and experimentation together. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? What have you been indulging in or experimenting with? Hmm. I've been experimenting with film. Ooh. Which is so interesting. Um, in, in this quarantine, I'm just like, Lord, I don't know where theater is taking us. Also, that's like a bulk of my income, so I'm not making money. I'm like, child, it may be time to just go ahead and dive into film. And so I've been like, just making solo films in my yard. And my parents are quite sick of it, but it's been really interesting. And I've been like writing more scripts now. Um, and I've also... So um, I like went vegan randomly because I was just like, what's this about? Um, so I've been exploring like vegan cooking and like um, I'm actually going to go pick up food from this vegan restaurant later and just like exploring, diff exploring different ways um, of how to cook like things that I like just like alternatively. So I've also been doing like a lot of cooking. So 
So it's been fun. Yeah, we'll see where the journey takes me. I don't know. I can eat chicken again tomorrow. But I won't because I feel so good. So <laughs> who knows? That's what I got going. I'm very curious about your vault of solo films in the backyard. Mm hmm. Very curious. Um. <laughs> I may send you one to make your day. You never know, Jessica. I'll okay. surprise you. I love that. <laughs> ah. Anyone else? Any vices or experiments that you choose to share? This isn't really like. I've just like ignored everything and read, just like read book after book after book. I've read like almost 15 books since we started quarantining, like oh. 15 like, novels. So if anyone wants any book recommendations, like something new to read, I've read so, and it's like, it's like, a, because I won't, my mom will be like, can you do the dishes? I'm like, mm-hmm. And I'll just like read and people are like, Delaney. And I'm like, mm -hmm. just like ignoring everyone in my household. So that's, I can confirm. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds good, but it's actually not the best. You know, and it's like an old fashioned escapism. Read a book. I literally do the same thing, Delaney. I'm like reading, and then I'm like, let me just make it to the end of this section. And then, like, five minutes later, they're like, Lauren, go do the dishes. I'm like, a little more, a little more. You know, and I totally get that. Um, I'm going a little little crazy on the languages. Um, I started relearning French, which I learned in high school. And so I'm doing that on Duolingo, but then I'm also like, what about Spanish? Which, I mean, it's a good language to learn. But then also, what about Gaelic? And I don't know why I'm doing any of this, but I am, you know? I'm just like, okay, let's see what Gaelic's like. And Gaelic is a weird language. It makes sense that it hasn't really made it that far. But um, yeah, that's one of the ones. And then I'm baking so much. I've made so many cookies. I've tried at least four different chocolate chip cookie recipes. Only two of them have turned out well. The Nestle Toll House on the back of the chocolate chip cookie package is the best one so far. Not gonna lie, that friend- Nestle, Nestle Toll House. Yes, Nestle Toll House. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Kaylee, yes. Um, but yeah, no, cooking a lot. My dad and I are gonna make apple beignets later today. Don't know what's gonna happen there. Uh, yeah, so that's just where I'm at. Woo! Making all the desserts. Um, just to give you a little peep into the chat here, 46 is over your virtues. Here, I'll go. I, I, I was more like a twice a year pot smoker. Now I would say I'm like a once a weekend watch movies. So that's just an old fashioned get high watch a movie vice. That was a, that's getting toward a vice. And I would say my drinking was more when the quarantine started, but I have since reined it in, in feeling how long this might go on. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, don't, I don't think I would call this advice, but coloring. <laughs> Maybe just a regression. Uh, I like to color and listen to podcasts. Uh, I, so I'm just trying to deliver on this non-productive because learning Gaelic, I mean, Lauren, Wow, that's amazing. That is an experiment, not advice. I've been reading the Outlander books, which are kind of a vice because they have lots of, lots of romance and some sex <laughs> chapters. Anyway, I, so I have something that will, is a perfect addition to what you just said. So I was like, I have a lot of time and I've always wanted to learn how to do a Scottish accent. And so I was looking, I've <laughs> I have audible book and I was looking to see which audible books are in a Scottish accent. But it turns out that the only ones are the Scottish, like the romance novels about like Scottish like fantasies. So there was like a 24 hour period when I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to listen to the, the full book and get really good at this because the narrator had like a really thick Scottish accent but by like chapter three it was like it was just too much for me and I had to give up but that was my brief experiment with the Scottish accent that's my whole story Fiona, what if, you if you can see our faces right now everyone's like okay let's hear it No, the word, the phrases I know are not appropriate for this <laughs> video because I learned it from a very erotic novel. What if you, what if we all paid you to make an audiobook of Fifty Shades of Grey in a Scottish accent? <gasps> yes. I love it. Hey, I would Venmo, consider it. Venmo Fiona some money. 
How much would one chapter be? <laughs> oh God. Oh God. I'll have to think about that. I'll get back to you. Uh, and on that hopeful note, I think I'll wrap this up because <laughs> over an hour on Zoom is like, mm. Woo. I love you guys. Love you. Love, Love you. you. Love you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Stay safe and healthy. Yeah. You too. Please. We need to Thank see you, you again everybody. on stage and off. <laughs> yes. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.